What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files. I'm your host, Nick. This is an Ask Nick edition. We have Allie in studio, Amanda. You're backing up. You just landed. Yes. And I had to pick up my keys from my boyfriend's house. So I am Zooming from his living room. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I had a topic that I wanted to discuss because Shoot. last week I went on very, like a very dull, I would say a dull date with this guy from Hinge. And I think in his mind, he thought it went very well. I did not feel the same. So I ended up texting Nick and asked you how I could tell that to him. Ended up texting him. He responded very well. But I was wondering, I'm like, what is the the kind of like back and forth? Because I've had people say, well, you know, it's the first date. You know, people are nervous. You need to give it at least a few dates to see what's really there. But then I've also had people say, well, if the best thing that happened on this date was that it wasn't bad, that's not a sign to go on a second one. So yeah. Like, yeah. So it's like, how do you know? Is it worth giving it a second one? Or are you just like, meh? I guess it just depends on how you're feeling. Yeah. Right. I don't know. There was just like nothing else I was interested to know about this man. So I think that's what. What was, was so bad about it? It just kind of, I was just so kind of like, I felt exhausted at the end of it and it wasn't even two hours. Um, and it just, it Is was. Is this the one who only talked? Yes. And didn't ask questions? Yes. Yes. Well, that could be why you got exhausted. Yeah. Because I was the one fueling it. I think I made the right call by not wanting to go on a second date. But then there was something in the back of my mind of like, oh, are you like cutting it off too short? Well, then you, how do you know you made the right call? Because the person you're talking about recognized his behavior. Yeah. And, and acknowledged it. Yeah. Which doesn't that always happen. I know. I just feel like there wasn't enough net positive to. I mean, people get nervous on first dates. Yeah. Whatever. I think I made the right call. There was just like this little twinge of me like feeling bad, but maybe I don't need feel to bad. feel bad. If you were mm. attracted to him or you thought you found him exciting or... Yeah. Interest, like maybe you're just like you thought he had a cool job, so if nothing else, you got to hear about his cool. I don't know, mm -hmm. but yeah, if you're just like, why am I going out? Then you don't. And, okay, uh, you know, don't he'll he'll be fine. He'll, yeah, he'll find his person. Yeah, someday. And now he had a lovely text in his phone from Nick. Well, not from me, but I cushioned what Nick. Nick was very like Nick said to say. I'm not sure I'm interested in a second date, but I appreciated the first one. And I cushioned it with like a little bit before and a little bit afterwards because that felt like a little too direct. What's wrong with being direct with someone you don't plan on seeing? Read your cushion. Oh, because he kind of apologized for talking too much. And I just said, all good. It's great that you're so passionate about what you do. Uh, I'm not That's sure fine. I'm up for a second date, but I really appreciate the first one. There's the Nick nugget. And I said, it was great meeting you and I wish you the best. And I think Nick hated the I wish you I the wish best. I wish you the best. It was <laughs> it, totally unnecessary. It made me feel better in the moment. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to, you know. It's all good. I had a really, thank you for the first date. I don't know if the second one, yeah, yeah. it'll sting a little bit, but he'll be fine. Honestly, I was just proud of myself for going. So here, here we go. are. Keep on swinging. I swung. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a great uh, week lined up. Great episode. Uh, we'll get to our callers in a second. Uh, tomorrow, the wonderful Hannah Burner is with us. Very funny, very delightful. She's been on before. We'll be talking all things pop culture, freestyle, probably dating relationships with Hannah. She always has some good anecdotal stories. On Wednesday, going deeper, Jenny Mullen, my friend, author, wonderful person. She's done some stuff with Bachelor Nation in the past. She's also Jason Biggs' wife. You know, they're a dynamic duo. Anyway, she's very funny, very talented, and uh, she's with us on Going Deeper on Wednesday. Oh, texting office hours? If you uh, have a text, we might uh, we might select you. So if you're listening to this Monday morning, email us at asknickacastme.com, cast with a K. And uh, don't forget to send in any of your questions. This episode is with the wonderful Morgan Epsher, who you might know from her popular podcast, uh, Two Hot Takes. Uh, she does very similar stuff. And we invited Morgan, and she's great. That was so a great enjoy little the duo dynamic. Enjoy the episode. Lovely. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Hi, it's good. My name's Lauren, and I'm 31 years old. How can we help, Lauren? So I am currently single. I'm from the East Coast, and I'm in kind of a rural um, southern state. I've been single for the last couple of years and I've had a really hard time finding, I think, the right guy to date. 
So I'm currently a physician, a full-time surgeon, and I feel like I've always wanted to find a guy that was like my equal counterpart that was also had a career and was driven, um, was well-traveled, was culturally diverse, had an education I could have like an intellectual conversation with. But I there feel are a like lot, those, there's, a, there's a lot of lists in there. There's, <laughs> there's, they're going down few and few, which is my problem. So yeah. those men that I had dated, I feel like they were always kind of still demasculated by me. So, and I realized that wasn't working anyway. So I kind of like broadened my horizons and tried to date like the blue collar worker. And, you know, I went out with the HVAC guy and the UPS worker and like those were fine too. But then I noticed you know, I took off my dating profile, like my, what my job was, because I felt like I was getting um, less opportunities from that. And then I was, you know, on a date with a truck driver. Um, and my friend, who's also a female surgeon, was like, what the hell are you doing dating this truck driver? Like, you have so many good things going for you. You have an Ivy League education. You're well-established. Like, why are you going out with these guys. I mean, like no one's paying for any of your dates. You're miserable. <laughs> You're paying like, for all the dates. Oh, I'm paying for like probably 90% of the dates. Yeah. Not even splitting. Um, well, most of them we are splitting, but sometimes okay. I'll be like, oh, I'll get this round. They're like, yeah, of course. Wait, of you're, course. Paying, like, <laughs> you're paying for, is it because of where you live? I mean, are these guys like can't like, afford it? Like where are you going? Southern air. No, I'm kind of like in a decent sized city in, okay. in the South. And I kind of ex- assumed that in the like, South poor Southern of all places. Guys, no. exactly. What happened to Southern hospitality? I know. I even, I went on one date with a guy and my friend was like, do not pay. Let the check sit there. Don't offer to split it. So I did that finally for one date. And then we sat there for a whole goddamn hour oh. with the check on the table. And I was like, you know what? No, I'll pay. Are, I don't care. Get first me out dates? Of here. <laughs> some of them are first. Some of them are second or thirds. Yeah. I think, you know, my friend I, was on the like, first dates, are you always going to dinner or drinks? Like, where are you going? Usually, usually drinks. I feel like a lot of times they don't suggest dinner. Usually it's like a drink somewhere. Interesting. Yeah. Which honestly, but, it's kind of a good play because I feel like long commitments on a first date can be really brutal in case you yeah, want to escape. I'm not a big dinner on a first date yeah. type of. It's a time commitment. I don't have a lot of time. I don't know. I feel like drinks work well for me but at the same time like i can't even get those <laughs> I, i'm a little like, surprised whatever. to hear that you're paying as much as you are regardless yeah. of profession like truck drivers can make a good living like they can certainly yeah, pay for exactly. drinks exactly um, no if that's my profession and that's why someone suggested for me to take it off so you did, think that maybe because they know you're a surgeon they assume that you should pay is that your assumption I like why know. do you think and it's I, Right. I don't know. And I don't know if it's. I mean, Have you taken very, it off your dating profile yet? So I did. Yeah. And that's what Did my you notice friend, a, sh- like, a shift? Maybe a little bit, not a whole lot. Maybe a little so bit. So you didn't really notice a, a marketable. Okay. Not like, a marketable you, change. Yeah. And I think what? my, my friend's point was that like, you're setting your, like, why are you not selling yourself for all that you are? Um, well, I don't necessarily kind of agree a, with your friend. I, I, I'm not a big believer in list building when it comes to finding a partner Mm -hmm. like i don't like it's all all the all these things that you described like i guess some of them are nice and could be interesting like certainly wanting to have someone that you have interesting conversations with Mm -hmm. that matters right because if you're someone who's a conversationalist and you want to connect with your partner but i would say i want someone i I connect with on a some Mm -hmm. sort of level but like whether they where they went to college what they do for a living you can find great people and shitty people in all different types of professions Mm -hmm. and i'm just a big believer in finding someone like you know character traits in terms of how they make you feel uh the type of what you're feeling when you're around them you know when you start looking for these kind of superficial qualities i think well, one, like you said, like you, have, you have a list of like well traveled, has a certain you know, I want a surgeon or a certain type of school. You're just you're just already narrowing down your list, and then a lot of those situations, you're probably finding people have a sense of entitlement, or mm-hmm. you know, when, yeah, when two absolutely. people who are building lists are looking who find each other, there's probably a lot of like entitlement, I guess. I I would say maybe 
and maybe you can help fill in some blanks, but I feel like maybe that was your initial dating. But by the sounds of how you've kind of cycled now, you've gone out with a UPS guy, the HVAC guy, truck drivers. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're kind of at this point now where maybe the list has been put on the back burner more recently because... Yeah. So I try to like, I recognize I was like, I'm 31. I need to expand my horizons. Like there are great blue collar workers out there and there are great people who don't have the backgrounds I do hundred percent. So I think the problem is, is that a lot of the people I've been going at more with more recently are like guys from here who have never left, who never want to leave. I think this is like God's greatest given state and Mm -hmm. just have no like ambition, you know, like they're happy doing what they're doing. And so I also feel like I'm stuck in that regard too, that it's like, well, I have no problem like exploring a lot of these men, but at the same time, are they going to move with me? Are they going to travel with me? Or they, you know, so I'm actually getting ready to move to Austin. So I'm excited to hopefully that that'll bring a whole lot better options. Yeah. <laughs> but part of me is afraid too, that I'll have the exact same situation and that maybe it isn't like a local thing issue maybe it is just the guys i'm selecting or the situation i'm in dating can be discouraging and you are still just looking for one and you are only 31 i know Mm -hmm. that might be easier for me to say than for you to hear but you know you eventually it's gonna happen Rothy's, whoo, love what Rothy is doing. They're saving the environment and make people look like they know how to dress while saving feet. I wore mine yesterday, completed my whole outfit. Yeah, also they're super comfortable. With their amazing flats that have no break-in, period. They don't believe in blisters over at Rothy. Neither do we. And uh, if you're looking some high fashion, all while knowing that you're being sustainable, because Rothy's, it's a, truly amazing what they're doing. I mean, you would never think that their flats and other purses and bags are made out of recyclable plastic. It's Mm-mm. like mind blowing. Because when I slid my foot into it for the first time and I was texting my sister about it because she also loves Rothy's, I wasn't even expecting it to feel like that because I feel like sometimes for flats and shoes, they're so stiff. And the second that I put my foot in, it was like so malleable and like went directly around my foot. And I was like, how is this plastic? Rothy takes sustainability to the next level. All their products are knit with thread made from plastic water bottles. They've repurposed over 125 million water bottles so far. Get on the Rothy's train. So whether it's style, comfort, washability, yeah, that's they always look brand new. Throw them in a wash machine. Done. Perfect. Brand new. You can go hiking in them. You can go mudding if that's your thing. Your new favorite shoes are waiting. Let's discover the versatile styles that you can wear absolutely anywhere. They get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's Rothy's. R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your first order. Ship station. When you run a business, time seems more precious than ever before. Many companies are running their business off of e-commerce platforms like Shopify. And ShipStation is an app that integrates with many platforms and helps you give you the best possible shipping experience for not only you, but for your customer. So you don't need to be a Fortune 500 company to get the deep discounted shipping rates that are normally reserved for them, but you get it now through ShipStation. 90% of companies that use ShipStation keep using it as long as they're in business, so you know they're getting a benefit from it. Sign up today and get a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com and start saving time with every shipment. That's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in V-I-A-L-L, ShipStation, make ship happen. I think Austin honestly sounds great. I don't know what city you're in, obviously, but smaller cities make it harder for women to date in general. And you being at the status you're at, the more intelligent a woman is, the more successful a woman is, unfortunately, her dating pool gets smaller. Like, that's kind of the reality. We have to shrink ourselves sometimes to make guys feel better um, if you're a successful woman. <laughs> right. I think and that's been like the my reality pill is it's, I thought those would all be great things and selling yeah. points, but I, I, just have found that they really haven't been and they're they seem to be like intimidating and have you never met know. a guy who you felt like appreciated those things not really a lot of it's like your your schedule's too hard or you know like um i'm just not as flexible with what i'm able to do or like i will never be a stay-at-home mom type of situation sometimes that's been the issue and i've been like well 
I'm okay with you being a stay at home dad. What about that? And that's like very quickly. It threatens their masculinity. Of course not. Right. Right. Well, couldn't, couldn't neither of you be stay at home parents? Love a good nanny. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Um, but maybe that's just the culture here in kind of like the South. I don't know. Yeah. I could see that. I think maybe it's a little bit too traditional. And where Austin might be a little bit more progressive, where you can find someone who wouldn't be opposed to being a stay-at-home dad or even just not having a stay-at-home wife, caregiver, Mm -hmm. you know, type person. Mm -hmm. I think there's lots of potential. I'm excited for you. So is there any other, like, is there a specific question other than, like, trying to figure out if you think you might be doing something wrong type of thing? I was just, I was, like, my question was, like, my friend kept saying, like, you're dating out of your league. And I'm like, is that possible? I personally think you're doing it right, which is you're expanding your dating pool. Because as you've told us, you've proven to yourself that you can find a surgeon and a plumber who can both feel emasculated by your profession or have certain expectations of what they want from the person they marry that doesn't line up with your expectations of what you want from a husband. So unless you, your friend seems to care more about status, that's how it sounds to me. And it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like you've recognized that maybe you're not looking for a s- status in your partner. Like it doesn't really matter to you, which I think is great, which I think will only expand your options. Yeah. How old are a lot of the guys you're going out with? Um, I think I put my age range like 26 to 33 or something like that. I would up that, like way up. Hmm. Guys mature much more slowly. Yeah, but they also die sooner. So I like your age range. (laughs) And I would bump it up. More divorcees and more kids the later I put it. (laughs) That is true. And uh, well, I, I I, I think you should expand it. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, if you want to go out the 26 year old, go. But like, I I would, it doesn't shock me that a t- you, going on a date with a 26, 27, 28 year old guy has some dumb questions and says that some is dumb also things. That's true. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like I didn't really figure myself out until I was 28. Now, that's just me. I mean, you know, yeah, I don't know if I'm the norm, mm-hmm. but I do think guys mature later in life. They do. Um, and yes, you are going to find more people who are divorcees or have kids. Also, like maybe that could be your guy. You know, you have to be mindful. Like your friend who had that oh that that comment or whatever she said. Yeah. About, you know mm-hmm. all the things, all the all the questions that seem annoying to you and frustrating to you. I mean, like imagine like a divorced dad might the type of questions he might get. Mm-hmm. you know uh or maybe a single guy who's in his 40s who hasn't been married or have kids and the what, what's wrong with you questions yeah. why haven't you settled down yet like so we right. all kind of come in and prejudge people on dates mm-hmm. so it, it's not just happening to you it is happening to everyone and it's happening to to men too mm-hmm. so i think it's just a good reminder the one that you're not the only one going through it and two also, just be careful you're not doing it to the people you're, you're dating as well or considering dating. I feel like it's always like a cycle because then at some point I'm like, I feel like I'm holding back because I can't talk about my shit because I don't want you to feel, I don't know, I just always feel like it's a vicious cycle. With that. Well, I mean, I, I know I struggle with it too. Like, I think we all, someone tells us something, we want to relate. And sometimes, and I, I think men are particularly bad at this and I know I can work on it, but like sometimes you just want to like, just listen. It's not a moment to compare or say me too. I all, you know, it's just like, you just mm-hmm. want to listen. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that's something that's going yeah. on, on too. But yeah. your general question, I think it's great that you've expanded your dating pool. I think you could expand the age as well. Okay. Um, I I'm, I'm, I honestly think if, if as a 31 year old woman, having 33 be your cap off, I, I'm a little surprised by that. I would, I'd go, I'd go up to 45. Mm, that's right away, but yeah. Well, especially if you want to have kids with someone, I think 45 like year old guys can't have kids. Yeah, but... I'm not saying she should start only dating 45 year olds, but I think kids. open the range and see who you might meet. I guess more the merrier at this point. Like, see what's out there. I do like the divorce day thing because I'm like, if they're divorced with no kids. Maybe they learn yeah, from their mistakes like, and yeah, they've grown and, you know, whatever. And 
that would be good. But or kids. I, I I'm I don't know. Well, maybe one or two. I am not telling her to marry a divorced person with kids. <laughs> I'm I not am ready saying, to be a stepmom. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking this too personal. I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, like if our caller's calling in with frustrations yeah. about people prejudging her, you know, like we're we're all sounding a little shocked because oh my god, you're a surgeon, how cool, like how impressive, and that's like the expectation. Like, there's a lot of like, and yes, I, I'm I'm assuming male surgeons will get more credit i guess and like praise rather where, where women surgeons seem to like right. when it comes to their personal life struggle nevertheless you are still dealing with prejudgment yeah and if we're going to continue to prejudge anyone for anything like those no, people just, are going to be frustrated too and yeah. i so i am just saying like go on the date with the 42 year old construction worker who might be incredibly mature, look like he's 30, take way better care of himself than anyone she's ever dated who's 27, learn from some tough breakups, and like is super confident with who he is and, and what he provides. And, you know, and like, oh my God, you found your husband. Yeah, and I like that. Okay, okay, you've convinced me. I would also just <laughs> say, possible. I think you can, I think it's sort of like, when you're hunting for apartments, how it's like the ones on apartments.com always get bought up right away. Like the ones that the, the avenues that the most people are trafficking are going to be the most competitive landscape. So like try coffee meets bagel, like try the league, try like fucking match.com or like whatever else. Like I think in the other thing, like kind of from like the matchmaking perspective is that so many women have really hard cutoffs surrounding height. So I think if that's something that you're open to being even slightly flexible on, like there are some fucking amazing. No, like five, nine, though. <laughs> you could be the Sophie <laughs> Turner you. to his I'm Joe like five, Jonas. Nine. You're 5'9". Yeah. Oh, I, I think that there's like, <laughs> and as much as I mean, my girlfriend's 5'9", but I, I have my sister's tall but as well. Yeah. And that was a big struggle for her. It, it was a short king spring. But yeah, yeah I mean, like I get I'm, that's I'm a you. It. Just you know, that is a you problem. Not like that's something you have to get over. I think it works both ways sometimes, though. Totally. Yeah, but sure. It, but I think like just maybe opening yourself up to it and yeah. kind of just yeah. like seeing how it feels because I totally get that fear of like you don't want to feel like you're towering over someone or feel self conscious. Right. But like, there's also some men who are so confident and. And just, they'll, yeah. they'll make you feel confident in those heels still and then being shorter. It won't even matter. Yeah, I think yeah. it goes both ways. But my, I think for the most part, the short, shorter men who don't want to date a taller woman won't even... They'll weed themselves they'll out. They'll weed themselves out. Yeah. Then, yes. Yeah. But the guys who aren't bothered by it, you know, 5'10", 5'11", yeah. I just... I feel like when you find the person that you should be with... All these things about like their profession and if how many times they've been to Asia or like if they're like five <laughs> eleven and how many books they read aren't really gonna matter to you. I think Austin will be good. New city, new dating pool. Yeah. I'm really hoping for that. Hopefully you can do some stuff in person. I've always wanted to try speed dating. I never got the shot. Oh. I, I really I think up in your cool. age is gonna help significantly. Yeah, and Austin is such a like a, a professional city from like my experience there that I think I think it'll be good. I mean, 31, 32, 33 for men is like the new 22. It's the prime. You're getting like you're you're just like. It seems like slim pickings. I don't know. I believe yeah, you. I mean, you're searching a like- bunch of fuck boys and like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> new city, new single, men that don't have Peter Pan syndrome. Single 30 year olds are just, you know, new, the new fuck boys. Yeah. Um, so either you they got wifed up early in their 20s. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, find the find the guy who's. Got young, out of that phase. Yeah, and a young divorcee. I'm I'm liking this plan. I think like there's so many like trends going around right now where people are like, even women are like, I wish I would have already been divorced by 28. I would have like learned so much more about myself and been blah blah blah. blah. So it's like, yeah. I, like I mean, I've already been divorced, divorce. but like it's only because like I was either lucky enough or smart enough to not get married. But there's a world in which mm. I did. Oh, the multiverse. Yeah. We're gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, and so. Yeah, I've learned, like, I've matured a lot through some tough breakups and tough relationships. Mm. And the difference between me and some other guys is, like, he just happened to get married and divorced, and I don't have that label of divorce. I just, yeah. I didn't have to hire yeah. a lawyer. I was just like, I think we should break up, you know? Yeah. And it was that easy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think, yeah, try to continue to get it. rid of those, yeah. like, those, pre- like, those preconceived, th- preconceived thoughts. Yeah. And, yeah. And just open yourself up. And when you get fatigued with dating, take a break. Yes. You know? Just 
don't be afraid to like just get off the apps for a couple of weeks or a month and reset. And just like anything else, like working out, you get fatigued, you need to like take a break. And dating, yeah. you know, if you feel fatigued, you're you're not going to be going in with the right mindset and you're you're the right energy. And so I think you you know it's always okay to just take breaks and then get back into it. Yeah. From now from time to time. Yeah. Well, All thank right. you so much. All right. Take care. I appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. ZocDoc. I just use ZocDoc for not only one doctor, but three. Because three. I only had doctors back in Minnesota, and I'm only home for the holidays, and then they're all closed. So I found a dentist, a normal doctor, and an eye doctor out here, and because I was booking them all kind of on top of each other. They even have this feature when I'm in the app and like booking the appointments where I tried to book my eye doctor for an appointment and this little error message popped up and it said, you have another appointment at this time. Would have booked them at the same time. ZocDoc is a free app that shows your doctors who are patient reviewed. Important. And take your insurance. Important. And are available when you need. Important. This Someone is like had no to do it. And ZocDoc was the one who stepped up and Why? said, we're going to stop making medical appointments the most emotional labor you've ever had in your life right? to set up. Ain't this it true? Like, how, did this, how did it take so long to create such an amazing thing like ZocDoc? It's shocking, but it's, it's amazing. And it's here. It's revolutionizing the game. Go to ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. ZocDoc dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Oh, travel like a rock star with Away. That's right. Away making amazing suitcases that last so long they come with a lifetime warranty. They'll even let you travel with it or have it at least for 100 days, whether you travel or not, for a money-back guarantee, no ifs, ands, or buts. What, what can I say? I mean, I have two Away suitcases. Does anyone else feel like bonded with other away customers when you see them in the airport? Yeah, it's like a club. Because multiple times now, I have the pink carry-on size. I, I've been on multiple flights where another woman has had my same suitcase, and we kind of like eye each other, and we're like, you get it. You they get roll it. four 360-degree spinner wheels. You just glide all over the place. Literally from JFK Airport to my friend's like third floor walk up in bed sty I was going on subways. I was going on city sidewalks. And the away could hang. Got a TCA approved uh, combination lock to protect your valuables. Mm -hmm. Also, it's appropriately sized. So they won't be like, oh, it's too big. I got to check that bag. No, they're, it's... It's made how it should be made, and it's amazing what you can fit. Well, they also have, like, they have um, various kind of, like, packaging features that make it a lot better. Like, in addition to, like, the zipper compartment on one side, they also have buckles that you can use to compress stuff. And I think the laundry bag comes in clutch because when you're separating the laundry, like, the dirty clothes from the clean clothes when you're packing, like, absolute game changer when you're at, like, day five of a trip. They also offer free returns and free shipping in any orders in the continental U.S., Europe, Canada, and Australia. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases, at awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your uh, name? I'm Michaela, and I'm 24. Hi, Michaela. How can we help? So basically, a little backstory is... Um, I kind of grew up in the same town my whole life, went to college there, um, and always had ideas of like moving to a bigger city. Um, and then I graduated during COVID, so that kind of delayed everything. And then about two months ago, um, I finally had the opportunity. I already had like a city planned, found a job there, and I've been living here for two months now. And I only have like one friend from college that is from here. And I think I just had all these like grand ideas of like living on my own for the first time and being in a bigger city. And now that I'm here, it's kind of like, I guess a lot lonelier than I thought. And sure. it's kind of like get up, go to work, come home, hang out with my dog, go to bed, do it over again. And so I kind of was just wondering any advice you have, like I'm in my early twenties, I'm in this brand new city, like how do you put yourself out there? How do you make friends as an adult? Um, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a tough one. It's also very relatable. One, you, you said you've only been there for two months. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's nothing in the grand scheme right. of things. So like, I also, I just, what you're feeling is so normal. Mm -hmm. 
So like, don't, Mm -hmm. don't try not to get discouraged. Like you're not, like you're not doing anything wrong. It's just a very normal feeling, especially having one friend. I I say it takes at least a good year to feel comfortable in a a new city, maybe even longer, you Mm -hmm. know? And like, I think it'll always get better after a year, but Mm -hmm. like it might take two or three years to really make that place feel like home. And you move from a place that you went for your whole life and then you went to college there. So that place felt like home. And now you're in a place that literally doesn't feel that way. So you're grappling Mm -hmm. with that sense of like, I'm just living in a place. I'm not feeling like a sense of community or just home, you know, it's, and that's yeah. just what it just takes time. So like mm-hmm. one, just give yourself a, l- a little break. And, you know, like, I don't know if you're having any like thoughts of regret or, or, or beating yourself up. Like what's, you know, if any of those try to try to eliminate those thoughts from your, your mindset, because it, it really only has been a, a couple months. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what have you like work? Are you working with a lot of people? Um, yeah, work is actually pretty good. I mean, we are kind of in a hybrid, um, model right now. So like the days I work from home do kind of suck, but everyone that I work with is really great. We're all roughly in the same age range, which is really nice. And so I'm hoping that goes somewhere in the future. But right now I feel like we're still very much like the getting to know each other, like only talking or hanging out, like in the office kind of vibe. How are you at like asking someone like, I mean, making friends as an adult is kind of mm-hmm. like dating. You kind of have to. Sometimes you have to make the first move. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when we were in grade <laughs> school, it was like, we used to say things like, do you want to be my friend? Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and as cheesy as it is, when my girlfriend moved here, she didn't know anyone but me. And obviously, like, I would hate for me to be the only person someone knows. But so she would literally <laughs> reach out to like people and be like, do you want to be friends? Um, and I was always like really impressed by it, but it's, and it, it's, it's very charming. And like you, no one says no. They either say yes and mean it, or they say yes and don't mean it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you'll find out quickly. And you know, they just don't follow up, you know, they're not available, but no one's like, no. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, you, you don't have to like, actually, do you want to be my friend? But you know, uh, I, Maybe like coordinate like at work, like at, like a little happy hour. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, I found this new like place that does like a trivia or a after work, like anyone interested in going? And I feel like a, I'm guessing a lot of people who you work with probably feel similar to what you feel, at least a couple. Yeah, definitely. Right? And someone's going to pick up on on those things. Also, you have a dog. Like you have the easiest mm-hmm. entry point. Like if there's hiking groups or dog meetups, whatever that is, like I'm sure find someone with a similar interest, go bring your dog to these places or coffee shops that allow dogs and make it a pattern. I'm going to go to this coffee shop every Saturday morning and see who else is there. Don't be afraid to like tell people like you feel a little lonely sometimes. I feel and what I mean by that is like it's okay to just when I moved to Chicago, I had no problem being like, yeah, I don't know anyone. And when you tell people you don't know anyone or you have no friends, people are like, oh, well. I know so I know people. Like, so just, I just, I'll, you don't have to act like you're not lonely and you don't have to pretend that you have a ton of friends. Mm-hmm. It's okay to just say how you feel around people because I do think people, if they know that you're in need of companionship and friendship, like, not everyone, but you're going to find people who be like, oh, well, you should come with us. And then, you know, you're going to have to be adventurous. You will like want to say yes to things that you might be like, oh, I don't know, I just want to go home and hang out with my dog, you know, because I think I think the pandemic has made everyone a little bit more comfortable in their surroundings and their safe zones and yeah. like just their regular routine. And so be mindful of that, that you are saying yes to things when given the opportunity, even if you are a little tired and a little like you just want to put in the sweatpants and go (laughs) home and watch, you know, like, you know, you're going to have to get out and and try those things. Uh, So like a little bit is this challenge. Make sure you are saying yes to those things when the opportunities do present themselves. Yeah. Also, the power of TikTok is incredible. Like I've seen so many videos of girls being like, 
I just moved here. I have no friends. Even people I thought were my I've friends seen those. suck. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I like photography. I have a dog. I love traveling. And in the comments, it's just hundreds of, I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. So you never know the power of TikTok. Yeah, I love a good, like, uh, I have uh, yeah. a TikTok confessional. Yeah. Of, like, the no algorithm friend. is so strong. One popped up that. for me and it was like, I am a girl from Minnesota who moved to LA and I'm struggling with friends. I was like, hey, I like slid into the comments. I was like, here's my Insta, reach out. Like, yeah. I was like, what are the odds? Yeah. yeah. And like, to, like mentioning where you're from, like, you know, add the a few hashtags things, or whatever uh, about like something about you that people can relate to. Um, and then obviously from safety purposes, meet people in Pub maybe about two public areas, you know, <laughs> screen them on a Zoom or meet them in public areas. Mm -hmm. Don't give out too much personal information, you know, so you don't just want to be careful about what that stuff. But yeah, yeah I've seen those and I it seems those. like they really work. They yeah. do. I saw like one, they were like, like, and it went like this and they showed the initial video. And then the next video was them like in Cancun on a girl's trip. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is so wholesome. Friend goals. Yeah. yeah. I love this. And yeah. also just when you do that, don't get discouraged if you meet someone mm -hmm. and then like a month later, you're like, this person fucking sucks. It's like dating. <laughs> you know, it is like, like dating. You, it's going to, it still is like you, you you're going to, if you start incorporate some of these things, mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain you're going to have some, some early success, but like dating, yeah, you're going to have to, it's going to take you a good year to two years to find that group, that people that you've really like turned into like some ride or dies, some true friendships, some people that you can like rely on and trust. And, and up until that point, you're, yeah, it's going to be a lot of like surface level friendships of like people who like to go to mm -hmm. Cancun and you're like, let's, let's let's do this crazy thing. <laughs> I met my best, my best friend in LA. That's how I ended up in LA. I, I was in living in Chicago and I went to Lollapalooza. Love Lala. And um, this guy who's now like my best LA friend, recognized me on The Bachelor and I had my guard up, but he was like the funniest, most approachable guy. And I just kept being like, all right, dude. And I read him <laughs> three days in a row. And by the third day, we were just like fast friends. Did we just become best friends? It was basically that. And then he was like, hey, I have like a house in LA and I have this extra room. And I, at the time I had a, uh, my agent, I signed it with an agent, but I didn't really know anything. And he mm -hmm. was trying to get me to move out to LA. And I was like, fuck do i do this that's and, just fate that's incredible and and then i was just like hey man like just don't murder me you know we kind of <laughs> choked and it, he ended up being amazing and we're like best friends and um so sometimes you just have to take some risks but that could have gone you know many different i was prepared for it to go <laughs> any which way right but um the other, yeah the other thing is that i found in la like my biggest obstacle to friends is like flaking like just because and especially post pandemic I just feel like in general people are a lot flakier so one thing that I think can be kind of nice is like I think trivia is awesome because it's the perfect yeah. combination of like you can chat you can get to know people but it's also it's like if you're if it's not super free flowing like you can always just like kind of like lean into the activity and like pick if you have a bar that you go to the trivia night every single week and then all of your friends know or all of your acquaintances or all of your work people know that like this happens every single week then it's like you know maybe only like one third of the people show up each time but then you start to have this like group going and then it just kind of becomes cemented as opposed to the like comparing calendars and trying to find a time that works mm -hmm. and then from there you can like see which people you really like and like hang out with them one-on-one -on -one. and i don't know like this might not be for you i don't know if it's different being a man versus being a woman but like when i also lived in chicago i like I would have never done this in Milwaukee because I would have felt like I would have judged myself. And I feel like there's freedom of moving to a new mm -hmm. place. And I started just going to dinners by myself. I would like go to like a nice steak place and like sit at the bar and just like treat myself and people will approach you. That's the only part that you might not want. Like you just, it might, you might like get hit on yeah. too much or, so I don't know if you're comfortable with that, but the idea of just like, doing things on your own and saying, fuck it, I'm going to go out to the dog park or, or go to a coffee shop and just try to create an approachable situation if you're down for that. It's just another way of People like- People at dog yeah. parks, yeah. It, is a, it is a squad. There's a dog park like two blocks away from me. <laughs> they brought me in. I feel like I have like one of them's like a mother from Canada and I now feel like she's my mom. Like there's this other like young guy who like our dogs get along, like be part of the group. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe take an improv class, like uh, some type of class. Oh my God, Skillshare. Um, like any, like you know, stand up comedy, whatever it is. You don't even have to like 
want to be a comedian or get into improv. Or pottery, like yes. literally yes. anything. And don't get discouraged. I mean, I'm 28 and I've got a close knit group, but I still have those days where I'm like, oh, I'd really like some more new friends. And oh, it's so hard to make friends in a big city and stuff like that. So don't get discouraged. It'll it'll come together for you. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. If you, that's the thing. If you just stay, if you stay active, go out there, say yes to things. Don't get discouraged. Give yeah. it some time. It'll, it'll definitely happen. Embrace the Jim Carrey, the yes man. Have you yeah. seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. That's like what you got to do. I was like, hard as it is like the bed thing. I'm, I think I'm like, I just would rather have a nap. You just got to embrace yeah, the go. yes. And you know, again, tell people that you're in the dog part. Oh, how, what are you doing? Oh, I'm new here. I'm, just yeah. looking to meet people say mm-hmm. that and pe- I promise you it's you- not it's the same it's just like dating it's not desperate it's saying what you want it's putting yeah. it out there it's up to them of how they want to receive it but you might as well shoot your shot no you're just like I just moved here I don't know anyone yeah. who it's <laughs> yeah. you know, a weird thing to like expect <laughs> you to know like it's a normal thing it is you know to not know on know someone you moved to a new city so saying that is that's why like when I did it like I wouldn't have done it in Milwaukee because I I kind of I was from there. So I had this expectation of myself, of like me going to dinner on my own. Like I should never have to do that because I should have friends because I'm from here. And yeah. when I moved, I immediately was like, well, I don't know anyone. So I guess I can go to dinner by myself. It's and nothing perfect. really changed except that I just stopped <laughs> judging myself. Yeah. Perfect excuse. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel, I feel like, yeah, just continuing to put myself out there, even when it's difficult and tiring is like, the only way to really get results. Yeah. And I think at work, maybe try to be the person who takes the initiative to create a after work environment. I, someone's going to, people are going to take you up on that. Yeah. I think you, you are a very relatable person for a lot of people who are just afraid of taking that initiative of putting themselves out there, trying to organize something. Everyone's just waiting for other people to do it and like come to them and ask them to be friends rather than putting themselves out there. Yeah. And if they're around the same age as you, like I'm sure they graduated during COVID too. And I feel like even my most extroverted friends, the people that were social butterflies would dance on tables at bars are coming out of COVID being like, I have social anxiety and that's never going to happen again. So take the initiative. And I think trivia honestly sounds like a great time. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks. You too. Bye. 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 How's it going? Good. Uh, my name is Jack. I'm 29. So Hi, thanks Jack. for having me. How can we help? So I recently met someone who joined my group at work um, this last fall. And I found him like really attractive off the bat. Um, we'd like definitely hit it off. But at the time, like he was dating someone, he was dating a girl. And so like it was just very platonic. We go out for drinks like maybe once every few weeks, once a month. Um, and then this come this summer, I'd invited him and his girlfriend to come with me and my friends, um, on a trip away for the weekend. And he actually asked if just he could come. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, come to find out him and his girlfriend had broken up. And it seems like within the last like three weeks, our like relationship has like very much changed. And like, we text all the time. I see him about three times a week. We'll go running together. Um, but I have no indication of like, if we are truly just friends, if I'm like feeling like an emotional void, um, or, or really what the situation is. Like I've had some cues from him, um, but I can't fully read it. And so you're just trying to figure out if you should make a move. Yeah. If I should make a move or if, if I'm reading the situation properly, um, I am leaving to go abroad at the end of the summer. So I'll be gone for a year. So it's kind of one of those two where like, I'm willing to kind of risk it a little bit because like I'll be overseas. Does, does, is, does he know that you date men? Yes. Well, he does. Okay. Yes. Is there a reason you haven't just sat down and asked him yet? Cause he's given me no indication he's ever to all I know he's straight. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just our genuine connection or it's like, does that make sense? Like I yeah, didn't want you're to say misreading the situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. You know, it, I have a handful of gay friends. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, like whether you're gay or straight, 
if you're my friend, like I like being close with my friends. So like I've never felt the need to like have like a wall up or be extra cautious or be careful of how I am around my gay friends because I, I'm, I'm afraid of giving them the wrong signal or wrong vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my, I've, I'm very comfortable around gay people. Like, you know, like I've, I've been invited to gay bar. I'm like, yeah, like, go to your gay bar. I don't care. So I'm just wondering if, if, if that could just be him where he's just, you know, he's not doing maybe like more, you know, things in the past where some guys might be like, just, you know, like, or like, feel like they have to just, just I'm straight, bro. I'm straight or whatever, or or like do some weird things or they like make a comment and they're just, and maybe they're just so comfortable that, because like a lot of heterosexual men, they bond on like, I mean, fuck, you go on The Bachelor and you have have a (laughs) bunch of guys living with each other. There's a lot of like, I love you, man. And like cuddling and like, they're just, they've bond and and they develop uh, a close connection and it doesn't necessarily it doesn't mean they are are gay or are fluid they just feel comfort and 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 that could just be it here's where my hope is very it very well could be i mean i can dive into some of like the signs i've gotten cuz my I friends, would love yeah i mean yeah. Love, we'd yeah. love more detail i know yeah. well yes. i peeked and i'm like okay it sounds like he's kind of flirty though and so i'm like yeah, these for sure. yeah and so should we I'm do like, a dramatic read yeah <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to preface, like the conversation we were having, I just told him like, hey, like I'm really anxious today. Um, and then he responded, like inviting me over with those texts you're about to read. So you told me you're anxious and he wrote, ah, oh, damn, man, I'm sorry to hear that. If you want to come uh, by, we can do some dinner or something. I just got out of the pool, smiley face. Could do some calves, like calf workouts. That's champagne. No. <laughs> <laughs> like cava, he really likes the Spanish champagne. Oh, oh bland on the roof balcony to, uh, to close the weekend. Little sunset send off. Side note: I have I haven't tanned my back at all, and it must be so burned. That honestly sounds amazing. Still here, but we were planning on going to dinner at some point. If you wanted to come, bahaha, you do have a solid tan, dude. Burnt back is the absolute worst. Up there with shoulders and top of feet. If there, you're good. Who's uh, my friend? Okay. If there, you're good. Wink face. But yeah, let me know. Uh, I'm either doing burgers on the grill here or I'll do din din uh, with y'all. That's, so that's pretty much it. Um, and so pretty much what he's asking me is Who like sent the picture watch. of his thighs? That was him. That was another text he had sent me. Like, I feel like, do you send that to your friends? <laughs> I, it's, it's a lot of thigh and a, yeah. lot, a lot of water there. It's yeah. definitely a... A quad pick. It was more the winky face for me than anything. Mm-hmm. Well, See, that, that, no, I don't know. You send I, your guy friends winky faces? No, you do no, not. No, I don't. You don't. But I, I, I guess I might my gay friends? I don't know. So let me just open everyone's horizon to a Reddit story I read recently. It's called, I fell in love with my gym bro. Okay. And it's coming from a guy who was previously straight, thought he was straight, never questioned anything. And started noticing this guy at the gym that he thought was super cute. Guy told him he was gay. And they were workout buddies, platonic friends for six months. He broke up with his girlfriend. And all of a sudden, he started to notice that his gym bro was really, really cute. And realized, I might not be as straight as I thought I was. And asked the gym bro out. And the rest was history. They're in love now. They're going on dates. And the guy, the gym bro, was like, yeah, I noticed, you know, there was something going on, even though, you know, you previously identified as straight because you can only check out my butt so many times at the gym before it starts (laughs) to get a little, okay, maybe you're into me. So my hopeless romantic self is like, maybe he's bi, maybe just sexuality is more fluid for him because for a lot of people it is. And being like, hey, I'm bi, by the way, like, I feel like that's not an opening thing when you're just making friends. So my, I'm like, maybe he is into you too. Well, I, I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to figure out no, you just, his interest level. You gotta but ask I think him. we all agree that you might as well just shoot your shot. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, if, and I can only put myself in like my shoes, right? Like if I, if one of my friends made a move on me, like I would just say, Hey, you know, I would in the nicest possible way, just say, I love you as a friend. And, um, 
feelings. I'd probably, yeah. I'd probably just keep it at that, you know. And if if, if he pressed me, I would just say, "Well, I'm I'm straight. I'm, uh, but I, I think you're you're great." And I would reject him like I would a woman, in a sense, mm-hmm. right? Um, so all you're just is facing rejection and his comfort level. I it would just shock me. That's what would shock me that this person would reject you in a way that would be toxic or surprise. You know what I'm saying? Like, would that yeah, surprise, that's a really good point. You know, yeah. like, all, like all of a sudden become like homophobic or or something like that. You know, that would seem surprising. Is yeah. is it one that you sent a picture of you and two friends? Is he one of oh. them? Uh, yes, he's on the right. And so the reason I sent that picture was because that was another time where like we've been drinking and we, me and my friends went to take a picture and then my other friend got up, but like he stayed there with like his arm around me, which I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not leaving this couch. <laughs> but then, and so then he can kind of give me a few like armpit tickles. Oh. And so like, he's done very the like. armpit tickles? Yeah, yeah, you don't armpit tickle someone you're not into. <laughs> this is flirting. I've, ne- I've never armpit tickled anyone. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like he was smiling and sometimes I'm like, I'll be around him and it'll be very platonic. And then there's other times like that where I feel like I'm reading his eyes and it's like, we both know what this is. And maybe he's just like, maybe you're the first person that he's really been attracted to. And this is like new territory for him. So I'd, I'd grab one of these bottle of Cav, Cav, Cava, whatever it is. And you pool by the sunset and just be like, Hey, I don't know if I'm reading this wrong, but I'm into you if there's any mutual feelings and you want to try this, let's do it. Yeah. If not, no hard feelings. I was reading it totally wrong. No, let's yeah, forget I like I the preface it. saying like, I, I, if I'm out of left field, yeah. I'm sorry or whatever. Yeah. But you, you guys look like a cute couple. I know. It's so Aww, cute. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at this picture. And <laughs> if you would have sent me this picture, I would have been like, Oh, that's a couple. Yeah. That's what our chemistry yeah. genuinely feels like. Like, the front on the left, him and I have a lot of the same stuff in common, but the energy is just so different. And the one on the left's been my best friend for years. So I just, yeah, it, I, I totally agree with you guys. I mean, we're, we're kind of building up to this trip. Like we're going in a month. I feel like- You're traveling together? Time I like, yes, like he's coming with me and my Figure friends. it out before you then. Before? Oh, no, yes. no. Uh, yes. Do it on the trip because- on the- Oh no, my God. Like, no, the last on day. The trip? No, yeah. on the trip. The very last day. The you want to do it on the trip? I think so, yes. But you're like, leaving we'll... at the end of the summer. Wouldn't you rather know? And if it is a yes, have a full summer and have a great trip with him. And if it's not, just be able to like settle into the new normal and maybe even find someone new to have a fun summer with. Like we are kind of on a ticking timetable. I, I don't know what that was but what what if, what okay, if, I know, what I know if we're it blows all, up the trip though? I know I guess I'm saying, I know we're all excited about this potential like romance. <laughs> the but, like, let's let's think pragmatically. Yeah. Like, is this trip booked? Yes. Is it it's in two have, weeks. have you you've spent some it's in two weeks. Yeah. So like I mean uh either forget, the last day of the trip or after. I'm just saying forget about whether you know the the g- either gay or straight element. Like just let's like say two platonic friends guy girl like getting rejected is weird and awkward regardless yeah so yes you know that's something you want to take into account you know like he he might be really cool and like respectful about it but also it could change the dynamic of an otherwise really fun trip Mm -hmm. if you did it before potentially well so it just depends on if you do it before there's always the risk that it could affect the trip it mm -hmm. just well i mean that's just a fact do it after there's a chance it could affect the trip He's gonna be mis- he's gonna be interpreting every single thing that happens on this trip. Maybe this guy's waiting for the trip to make they've, his move. Though that's also possible. And he's he, they they're hanging out all the time, anyways. Like I think he, yeah. You, I, I, I think you you would be able to like still enjoy his company, regardless if this is not yeah. addressed before that, right? Yeah, I think my biggest insecurity is just like being the stereotypical like gay friend that like crushes or is trying to date his straight friends. Does that make sense? And mm-hmm. like, yeah, but he's being the stereotypical Tickle straight your, friend who's like flirting it up with his, with his, with his, you know, <laughs> and I totally, and I totally get that. Like, cause like, I, I don't know. I had like, when I was like first like being like, oh yeah, like I'm bi, like to my friends and whatnot. Like I was, I had weird anxieties that like lifelong friends who I know there's never been anything other than like purely platonic vibes with. I'm like, what if they think I have a crush on them? And I like, I totally get like that there is kind of that pressure. But that being said, it's like, 
don't gaslight yourself on their behalf. You know what I mean? Like, don't let them think that you were doing anything inappropriate or you were like, like pushing them. Like, you know what's happening. Like, you're mm-hmm. reading the vibe. Like, validate your own reality. Validate the fact that you can pick up on things and that, like, if they want to be like super defensive and reactive and like l- go in that direction, like, that's just like kind of shitty on them. on them and it's mm-hmm. not your. Yeah. And you even said, you said, you know, you and the other friend in the group have a lot in common, but that's not the vibe. It's not the energy. It, you're not going around wanting all of them. Like you're making a very conscious decision. You're reading the room. This is for a yeah, reason. Yeah, there's a big difference between yeah. like mm-hmm. this situation you're in and and just being someone who's like, I can convert anyone or just like, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, you know um, but yeah, I mean, who really knows? He could just be someone who's really comfortable with himself and maybe he finds himself flirting with you because he knows you're gay and he's just like everyone likes a compliment and and maybe he doesn't realize he's leading you on that's entirely possible like even the, the armpit tickle does he tickle anyone else's armpits no there okay. were, there were three of them and then we were in the elevator too and he's like pressing i was kind of in the corner of the elevator and he's like pressing up against me he like oh, smiled okay. at me yeah I, I feel like that those are well, they're very... They're clear signs, I would say. Yeah, because like that's big different than saying, oh, you you look nice in those pants, like yeah. just because you're <laughs> yeah. complimenting your friend. He's he's going out of his way to f- like physically interact with you. Yeah. So but I then, would say... So those are the positives, but then some of the other stuff I've gotten is like we... When, like what genuinely will run together and like I feel like there's a lot of times where I've been in his apartment where like he's... Actually, one time he invited me over. We... I go on the balcony, drink champagne. He takes me to his brother's 30th birthday. But then at the end of the night, he like goes to shake my hand. So it's like some of those where it's like very <laughs> confusing to me in a sense. Around, was it around his brother though? No, just me and him. Maybe he is just seriously confused. Well, that's a thing. I mean, if if he is into you, we're also talking about a guy who hasn't maybe come out yet. Um, so it might be something he's struggling with. So mm-hmm. it wouldn't be shocking if his behavior was confusing or one way one time and another way another time. Also, like he gave you an armpit tickle and cornered you in an elevator and you didn't do anything about it. You know, he could be in his head being like, Well, he's fuck, rejecting me. He's not in like the f- oh, no, 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 I match his energy. <laughs> Don't worry oh, okay. about <laughs> you tickle right back. Move. Okay, <laughs> 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 I think you shoot your shot for sure. When I think you're just going to have to decide what you think is the most comfortable with. I would wait until the last favor, day of the trip. I'm in favor of going on the trip, not doing it before. Maybe trying to like make a subtle move or like just try to see if there's a moment. Mm-hmm. Don't force it too much, but just feel it out. Feel it out. And depending how the trip goes, after the trip, if it goes really well, then I think you do exactly what Morgan said, where you just say, can I just be honest with you? And I'm sorry if I got this wrong. And and if and if you don't feel this way, it's totally fine. Our friendship means a lot to me regardless, but I I just gotta say it and and ask. Mm-hmm. And um see what he says. I actually really like that because it doesn't ruin the trip, but then also like I am going for it too. So like, I'm not just kind of letting this like yeah. go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Allie's idea of doing it before the trip, like if, if he says yes, then amazing. Cause then all of a sudden, like this trip is a completely different You're trip. You're packing yeah. differently for that yeah. trip. <laughs> <laughs> the best trip of my life. Um, <laughs> but also something could happen on the trip too. Cause that happened with me and a guy that I dated over summer once and it, happened over the 4th of July and it was very like yeah. magical of like yeah. hands brushing and then by the end of the trip we were like sharing a bed so yeah. the safer play is to wait a little bit mm-hmm. yeah um yeah but you should definitely shoot your shot I think so too but, okay. and who knows and yeah and I I feel like you guys have already echoed the sentiment but like I should feel confident in the fact that even if I go for it and he's not into me whether it's a sexuality thing or just me in general like he's giving me all the signs that I at least like can like have reasoning to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're, all you are is shooting your shot with someone you're attracted to. That's it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's not enough. I'm, 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 I'm flattered if a gay guy hit on me. I'm like, I'm, I'm not into. It's like, you know, Everyone's not everyone flattered not everyone, to be. Not everyone feels that or, way, but like at this yeah. at this day and age, like go for who you're into. Be respectful. Like when you hit on someone and when you shoot your shot, 
you have to reckon everyone, I don't care what your sexuality is or if you're a guy or a girl, you have to recognize that they might not be into you. They don't owe you anything, you know? They don't really, yeah. other than your consideration, you know? But like, so they can reject you and as long as everyone's respectful, then like, sh go for what you want. And, yeah, I'm uh, on the same page. Yeah. I love this plan. Will you keep us updated? Yeah. yeah we'll oh, I have to. Will you keep me updated? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start a group chat. Out. Yeah, please. <laughs> Um, two weeks i'll set a reminder yeah. yeah and i mean he's awesome too like my friends all absolutely love him like we get we're just have so much in common so like i really want it to work and again if he if he is i'm, I'm guessing there's a probably a lot of confusion or questions he has so like yeah not that i'm an expert into this but at all but just you know try not to overread it you know, be patient, I guess is what I'm no, saying. No, for sure. And I think when it comes to the sexuality part, that's something I've almost removed from it because like you can never really tell like what someone's sexuality is, whether it's mm -hmm. one person yeah. or multiple people they're attracted to. So like, so my friends have asked me like what a sexuality is, but I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I'm not going to speculate on it. I just know like what our relationship is. Exactly. Well, good awesome. luck. Thank you guys let, so much. Yeah, I, let us yeah. know. We're trying to find out. <laughs> Fingers man. crossed over here. Um, all right. And like I said, you guys are a cute couple. Really cute I couple. Know. Oh. <laughs> I know. I love this. <laughs> Seems like a fit. Uh, all right. Take care. Awesome. Thanks, all right. Guys. Bye. All right, bye. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, I'm Richard. I am uh, 27 years old. Uh, and this is something I think is probably relatable to a lot of people in terms of just like, how do I move on from like just the crazy dating app phase or how do I like mentally reconfigure myself to actually be ready for, uh, you know, something with one person. Um, so I can like provide background for, yeah, yeah. to like why I'm struggling with that. So, um, I moved, so I'm 27, like I said, graduated as, like a post-grad year and then moved to a brand new city. Uh, none of my family here. I didn't know anyone here when I was 23. Um, I dated someone for two and a half years, including living with them for, um, the end portion of that, uh, right after moving here and, uh, ended that relationship, uh, realized how like starting startlingly little that I had going on, like in my new city, basically outside of that relationship. I had like two friends pretty much that I had made, uh, over, uh, those years. So. Uh, so now I have, uh, since then I've adopted two cats. I've made a lot of new friends. I've done like my whole like single guy phase, got into like the nail painting, like growing out my hair and like stuff like that. It's really like, I've never done dating apps or anything like that. Uh, cause I dated through college, dated one person in college, dated my high school girlfriend through high school. Um, so I like knew how to be a boyfriend, did not really know how to, uh, date, uh, signed up for Hinge, went on more, uh, like kind of deeper on into uh, a couple of exploring things with a few people and like got to the same, you know, that dreaded like 1.5 month time where it's like, where is this going? Like what's happening? You know what I mean? Uh, and I just, I'm was with people that I know are like objectively great and, you know, have a lot of things going for them, but I was just not, I'm not in a position where, um, where I feel like I'm actually mentally in the right headspace to like engage with one person, even though I want to be basically. What do you mean by not in the right headspace? Like I feel very, uh, like I've been reading about like attachment styles and stuff. And I feel very like anxious attachment. If I am really turning towards one person specifically versus if I'm just like going, you know, just playing the field or whatever you want to call it. I think nowadays in general, we get used to these, all these options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, like you said, you're, you, you, know, you were this relationship guy in high school or college, whatever, your early twenties. And then all of a sudden you yeah. get to date. And I think just, again, that's that net Netflix analogy. You know, when you're told you have all these options, the desire to find perfection, I think increases and mm -hmm. the fear of yeah. missing out on something else increases. Because you're just like, mm -hmm. well, I, you know, there's just, I, I must be able to find the perfect person because like I have access to everyone. And right. I think that creates a level of anxiety around like, well, is this, is this like what I should take myself off the market for? Um, yeah. 
And I think a, a lot of people make that mistake of, you know, when they have this define the relationship conversation that they're supposed to know if this person is their person at this point. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that's very realistic. And so maybe that's why you feel like it's this dreaded one month and a half or five week conversation because yeah. you're probably thinking, oh, well, they're nice and I like them and you know, like this and like that. But like, I don't know, I'm just not, not head over heels or I'm not feeling that, and, and it's like, it's yeah. good, but like, then you'd like open up the apps and then you start like, oh, she's cute. Oh, what it could be, could be. <laughs> tall. Yeah. Like I'm so, I, what I'm trying to do is like drop the physical thing. Like, cause I know what I like care about long-term is not like if she's like six foot one, you know what I mean? Like, and, but still I've, I think that I've only met like three people online, for example, that I felt like I would date them seriously but i knew within the first five minutes each time and i like that's not how i want to be like that's not how like i don't like i don't understand how uh when i think I'm you're being a little like, too hard on yourself me. yeah what's wrong with that yeah. if you know and you know and it feels right like what's wrong with that i think i think you're you're lacking a little balance mm -hmm. right yeah because you can meet someone and within the first five minutes feel that whatever excitement you're describing describing and this and this awareness of I know I'm in this person mm -hmm. I know I want to like them I know that like you know I'm probably going to give them benefit of the doubt and still the awareness that you don't really know them and you still have to vet them out and you you know mm -hmm. and or you can meet someone where you don't necessarily feel that initial excitement and still also be willing to get them uh, to get to know them and then develop a, a deeper connection it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be one or or the other Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with being physically attracted to someone and being a little bit more excited about that person because, yeah, we don't want to settle too. Like you, you do want to find someone you're very physically attracted to with the awareness that like looks fade and that you are looking for something much deeper than just a physical connection. Yeah, exactly. I would say mm -hmm. like don't get caught up on like the stereotypical dating to do's or how to date like every relationship, every person is going to be so different for you. And like, I was with people for years that I hated. It was kind of that situation. I'm like, they look good. They're funny, but like, wow, they're a bad person. And then my boyfriend now who I've been with for three and a half years, I was not really attracted to him at first. Like his mm -hmm. legs were smaller than mine. I was like, I usually date hockey guys with big asses. And this is not my typical guy. Meanwhile, he walked out of the first date and told his friends, get the wedding invites ready. Like, this is the one. And so it's like, you can be all over and two people might not even connect after yeah. a first date. So just like, enjoy the process and give people more chances and see how it develops. I'm reading here, is this situation with this, this girl you wrote in about still going on? Yes, yeah, it is, yeah. So like, I mean, we, yeah, it's definitely something that, uh, that I can talk about. Um, she is someone that I met like about four, like 14 months ago. My summer relationship started uh, beginning of June and went through September. Okay. So I met her like April of last year, went out for like a month or a month and a half. And at that time, um, I was going to like provide like we live in a Midwest city, definitely with like a definitely I went to school on the East Coast. So like I'm used to people waiting till really long, like, you know that whole like coastal mindset, yeah. but it's definitely like much different and much younger uh, here. Um, but so uh, I kind of go in with probably too much of a sense of like the good ones are going to be gone. Like if I wait, you know, or like something like that. But anyway, sure. um, so I date her really get to know her for like a month and a half to the point where I'm confident that I want to date her. Uh, like I want her to like be my girlfriend. I want to be exclusive. We had had the exclusive talk like before. Uh, and so she's talking about bringing me on a trip and uh, meeting mom. And I'm like, cool. Uh, as part of that conversation, I'm like, so like, does that mean that I'm your boyfriend or like, am I on track to be your boyfriend or whatever? Uh, it was like, no, uh, at that, like not ready yet. Um, and so that like freaked me out and I went on a date with someone else. And then that's, I ended up dating that person, 
uh, for the entire summer. The person that I went on the other date with. So um, her wanting to m- introduce you to her parents, but not wanting to be your girlfriend, like it did that didn't it compute made me with doubt you. her intentions. And like I know her now as a friend, like even like as like a best friend, even. And like we've talked about it since then. And like the, she was afraid of her bad judgment in the past. Yeah. Uh, and that's that why I think like, it's all that, you, that was like yeah. the final step for her is to like see with those people. And I want to believe that uh, if she would have communicated that at the time, I would have been like, oh, sure. Like, you know, that makes sense. That's uh, that's logical. Um, uh, like, let's do the trip and let's see your mom. Uh, but it, it may have not. Like, I was much less experienced dating when I met her. Uh, and I was, you know, I was probably not ready for uh, a relationship at the time, even though I wanted to be anyway. And yeah, like, weirdly enough, I just I think people are, have these weird rules about what it means to meet parents that they that put a dra- lot more pressure that very on drastically yeah. from person to person and um yeah i mean we we're, we're we're living in this time with where people are you know i th- yeah i like more you know, said six months now and i did it for like nine months and i said no to nally at first and mm-hmm. like you know and and in both those situations whether you're morgan's uh boyfriend or my girlfriend, Natalie, both of them could have decided to like, say, I didn't, you know, enough's enough. And at one point, Natalie was like, well, I'm no, I'm going to start giving you less. Mm -hmm. And that, that changed how I approached it. But yeah, I I think it's better to just say, I'm not ready. And then you deciding, okay, well, I might not be ready for this then as a result. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But like, it's never great to like, to drastically just be like, well, then I can't see yeah. you anymore. Or yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. You know, that was. It, it sounds no, like that you recognize a... that that now, but I think part of dating, especially in our twenties, is kind of re like relearning things that we thought we should do. Whether it's because we learned it from our parents, or we learned it from TV shows or movies, you know, of or our friends, of all the things like these, like you know. You go on TikTok and everyone's talking about red flags, and it, it, yeah. and some of them are obvious, and some of them are like trivial and weird and don't make any sense, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. one person's red flag might not be a red flag for someone else, so I think we always have to be careful about like overthinking about what it means for someone to, you know, say I'm not ready or, you know, as long as there's a progression. And then again, you can slow things down too, but uh, reacting as you did. And it sounds like you re- realize that. Like that was my original question is how can I like reboot this and make her feel trust in me? But I like it's not as that's not what the situation is. I think the situation is both of us are in like a time where we like, you know, we should be friends and like continue to. But are you guys are hooking up? Yeah. Yeah. OK, then you're not friends. <laughs> You're friendly. Yeah. Do you want to date her? Like, I know you say, uh, like, I, we're not right, like, timing, yes, whatever, but do you I want really to? I really want to date her. And I've never had the connection where I actually knew someone before I, like, became involved with them romantically. I think you need to shoot your shot yeah. with her. And I think it goes something like this. I mean, you're friendly with her. You're friends with her. You're also hooking up. And I think at the right time, you just say... I don't know if this is a surprise to you or some version of like, but I I think you are great and I like you and I know we have a past and I'm not even asking you to decide right now, but I just want to put it out there that I'd like to try to make this work with you or I, you know, and, and give her space and time that you didn't give her in the past to like sess it out. And, and don't like, even I would have, I would have some sort of timeline in your mind. Like, I don't think she gets like a six months to decide, but like a couple weeks, a few weeks, maybe yeah. in a month, maybe even like a trial run, you know, like yeah. you're going to be, but after a couple months, you might be like, all right. And you might even say like, listen, first get a reaction. And if she's just like, well, what about last time? And I don't know. And you just say, well, listen, I just, I think what we have is great. I don't want to lose what we have. And I'd love to just try with you, whatever that means. We don't have to put a label on it right now, but I'd love to just like, like, I just, 
I I don't think of you as a friend. I'm like we're we're having sex, we're hooking up. Like I and and I'm not asking again for like an answer right now. I'm not asking for you to call me my your boyfriend, but I'd love to just I'd love to start like seeing each other that way mutually and and seeing if it turns into something and then check in in a couple months and see where it goes. And you'll have to decide, you know, how much time you want to give it. But it sounds like you care about this person. You're ha- like this. This is she's not your pal. Yeah. Well, also you look at this past situation like, oh, I made a mistake. But honestly, if you would have pursued her, maybe you wouldn't even have these feelings. So I think like this whole course of action, it was a great learning experience for you. You got a chance to develop a friendship with someone and get a more intimate relationship with them prior to actually now dating, dating. So this all could have worked out the way it was supposed to. I think you set the boundary of if you want to date her, then you cut off the physical element and you don't do it as a punishment. You just say, I don't know if you've noticed and and maybe she is pulling away and you're afraid of the rejection, but you just, you just say, I like you and I want to explore this and I don't want you to be a hookup buddy. Mm -hmm. Either we're just going to be friends or, or not. But like, I personally would rather, I want to try to like, I want to try. And like I just said, and see what she says. And if she says, well, I don't want, to do that, then then stop sleeping with her. Yeah. And, and I think until you have that conversation, she probably will be wishy-washy and go back and forth because of the past. Like, yeah. I would be apprehensive in, in her situation. Yeah, sure. So until you have that and you really set a solid boundary and really say how you're feeling, you might get the wishy-washy flakiness and she might be super unsure. Because it sounds like you've, you haven't fully put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. You kind of like make yeah, these or kind of... Like- suggestions or but it's not real it's yeah, not it's, like a sit down this is how i feel you're, you're, i want to give us a real shot well, that's the problem like everyone's out there hedging their bet with these passive aggressive moves or these induendos because they don't want the other person to reject them so everyone's just like expecting and that would fuck that would make me anxious <laughs> like everyone's reading books about attachment styles and be like i don't i don't really know there's a or, lot out there every once in a while you just need to like sincerely say i care about you i want to try I'm willing to get hurt here. I'm willing to wait around for you a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, not forever, but I'm willing to just let you know that I'm serious about this. Also, like, I don't want to just keep casually hooking up, setting some boundaries and then seeing how they respond, knowing that part of that response could mean rejection and just going for it. But like, we're just confusing the shit out of everyone by like, yeah, (laughs) just kind of like dipping a toe in the water and seeing if the other person knows we want to get totally wet, you know? Well, so many people yeah. play the game of who's going to care less because therefore yeah. I'm less likely to get hurt. And like the reality is dating, like you you could get hurt, but you also could strike gold and have the greatest relationship ever. So yeah, you got to go for a, it. I mean, it, like I, it just feels like different than before. And like, I don't know that before. that means that it's supposed to yeah. like, I don't know that that means that it's going to work, but like, I There's know that chance. the way that it felt before didn't end up working. So. It's not what it was before. You guys know each other that much more now. Mm-hmm. You have a history now. Things are, are a little complicated. It won't be this clean, I just met you, we fell in love situation. <laughs> it is, mm-hmm. It's not that anymore. So like, mm-hmm. get that out of your head. And it is, like to Morgan's point, it is probably confusing to her. It's confusing to you too. Yeah. But all we know is that like you care about her, you are sleeping with her, and this will only get messy in its current state. So you yeah. just have to like shoot a shot, take a risk, and see if it can turn into something. We're not guaranteeing you it is. It might not, but we are guaranteeing you that like what you're doing isn't going to get you what you want. That's that's for certain. Yeah. You're just going to confuse yeah. yourself even more. Yeah. Someone, someone's going to get hurt in its current state. Mm-hmm. I'm confident about that. And then if it doesn't work out, I think, you know, again, you're still young, just maybe not have so much of a roster you know like yeah this is i mean they, most of my friends are girls and this is what this is definitely what they they always do yeah, yeah and you can date someone that you're kind of into for a couple months and i i'm i was guilty i was as guilty as anyone where it's just like this fear of like well taking myself off the market uh, p- part of the reason why i was like when i finally like, decided to, to date my girlfriend because I had all these reasons why I don't think it was going to work out. I had my insecurities and I was like, <laughs> I've been single for the better part of eight years. Yeah. 
I, I might as well like, and nothing, I could have dated five people and had like four one year relationships and I would be in the same spot as I am now. So like, I might as well just yeah. go for it and try and see if I can build something and you can always end it. You can always break up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, I definitely think people are, are, and I've said this before, but they're, they're watching too many previews on Netflix trying to find the perfect movie. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to watch it and see if it's what you like. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I think other than this, like what, like how do I adjust the mindset of like getting attention from so many, like how can I, like I know it's just a matter of time, but I feel like I cut everything off and then that happened and now I'm just like in this vacuum where those times where she's being like pushing me away sort of, I just feel like insecure, I guess. Uh, you, it's it's being consistent. You have to not respond to her being how she is, because what that's what you, you, your ego is getting activated. So like you you make a move, she pulls back, then your ego's like, oh, don't put yourself out there. So you act cool and you act distant and you act confusing. You need to like be consistent and clear with your intentions. And no matter what she says or does, you're just like, I still like you. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. I still want yeah. you. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to take this risk. And mm-hmm. that's key. Like that, like drop the mic, end it now, because that follow through is what's probably going to shift her mindset. Because I think yeah. I was in her shoes and I said, no, I didn't want to date you. But I, you know, with my own issues, and maybe she's in the same boat with fear of abandonment and things like that, I needed to be a little standoffish at first. And I needed that, you know, my boyfriend to prove he's going to stick around. A little yeah. pushback isn't going to scare him off. He thinks I'm the one. He thinks I'm worth it. And so maybe that's what she needs, like the consistency and the follow through. Well, that is how I feel. So I just need to, I'm, it's clear that I need to communicate it and do it in a way that's like not too much all at once. Mm-hmm. And, and like just finding that middle ground, I guess. Yeah. You don't have to be like, I love you on a marrier. You? You're just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I like you. I want to pursue this. I think we have something here and I want to try and I want to show you that I'm willing to try. And regardless of her reaction, just stay consistent. Don't back off to say, and if she's like, I don't feel the same way you do, you just say, well, I'm sorry to hear that. But like, if you change your mind, I, this is how I really feel. And I don't think we should keep hang, hooking up, but like, I'm happy to be your friend and mm-hmm. I want to be friends with you and I care about you and set some boundaries and, and see if she responds. All right. I can do that. All right. Good luck. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you All so right. much. Take Bye. care. Bye. Morgan. Amazing thanks, time. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having a pleasure. me. Uh, please continue to let uh, our audience know uh, where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, where they can listen to your show. Yeah. So show is called Two Hot Takes. You can find it on all the podcasting apps as well as YouTube. If you and like this show, you'll like Two Hot Takes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we read Reddit stories and kind of give the same thing. We give our advice, our takes on it and things like that. It's, it's a wild ride just like this was. Awesome. Thanks well, for having me. Guys, thanks for, for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at castmedia.com, cast with a K. And we will see you tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps and Wednesday Celebrity and Expert Interviews. See you next time.